All right, today we're doing something different. I'm showing you behind the scenes of the office and basically where I film. So in the living room, this other room over here that you guys don't really ever see, and just all the gear that I have. Not necessarily used, but all the gear that I have. I'm sure we all get caught up in that. I can already tell what you're thinking. How much RGB do you have, Josh? And you know, I have so much RGB, even my underwear is RGB, okay? I bought all the RGB stuff for ambient light in the background, because that's what you see on Twitch streamers, and it just didn't end up working but i got all this rgb behind me it's all a corsair brand because i don't know i just wanted to keep it the same so you can control the flow with music and uh, i don't know anyways i'm gonna be using this camera right here which is a gh5 i'm gonna be using this little wireless go kit here road wireless go and uh yeah I'll show you behind the scenes and the equipment that i have and what it's used for and how i use it and some ideas for some equipment and you guys can let me know if you want more clarification on anything this video is kind of gonna be a precursor to me doing gear reviews so if you don't want to see gear reviews in the future go ahead and uh, just not watch those videos I guess but anyways let's go ahead and get started All right, let me just give you a quick overview of the room here this room is like 10 by 9 it's not very big and this house was built in like 1939 so I have two plugs and uh, everything everything is being used I'll start with my cinema camera here this is what I normally film on this is a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. It's designed not to really go anywhere. You can take it off the tripod, but this is my streaming camera. This is my main rant in my chair camera. This is my main camera for everything. I do have a couple other cameras, uh, such as the one I'm filming on right now, which is a GH5. It shoots 6K. Not a lot of people know about that. It shoots 6K in 4x3. You get tons of extra quality. You can zoom in without losing quality and stuff. It's, it's amazing. Anyways, um, so there's this big thing on the back here. This is just a big battery. This is called a V-mount battery. It's in the shape of a V. And then the actual mount on the back just pops in like that. So this is the Pocket 4K. This screen right here doesn't actually flip out, so you can't vlog with it. Um, you have to use this external monitor up here, which is what I have, which takes one of these big, huge batteries. But you can, you can take it off the tripod and you can film with it. And you know when you, you hear people are like, yeah, carrying that camera around all day was really heavy. Yeah, it does get heavy. I filmed my, my dad's video where he quit his job. It does, it does look super professional. It looks like you're filming. The only thing I'm missing is the, is the uh, box on the front where I get the little flaps and I can drop in little filters and stuff. But this is the main rig that I film most of what I do. So if I turn it on real quick, I'm shooting on a Sigma 18 to 35. It doesn't have autofocus. That's the thing. It doesn't have continuous autofocus. So if I'm sitting here, like this this is why i'm out of focus all the time because i can't reach the focus wheel i could get a follow focus but that's just so much setup you know follow focus is like a remote adapter that gets a little wheel that turns the turns the focus for you but this is why i'm out of focus all the time because i can't reach it so i just have to guess this tripod is pretty cool um just got your typical movements you know up down left right but what it has is this little handle here that you can turn and it's on a ball joint mount so you can kind of lean it a little bit it's a uh, it's actually pretty cool this battery lasts forever literally lasts all day um, if you actually use the native batteries inside of this you last for like 20 minutes this is a cage that i bought for it small rig stuff this is a handle that you can hold and uh, some extra stuff you can mount this is called a uh, hold shoe because it doesn't have any affiliate with the camera this wooden handle over here so i can Hold it better it doesn't actually record to an sd card it records to a ssd card so this is a samsung t5 one terabyte ssd but it shoots raw footage that's why this is that's why this is such a great camera because if you mess up shooting you can go into the footage type which is called raw and you can change it later if i shoot like too bright i can go into the footage in uh, premiere pro and i can fix all that stuff because if i mess up it's too dark it's got noise I can raise it up. Here's the light that I usually use. I usually just use this one light uh, with batteries. It lasts for a few hours. It does It does okay. Uh, GVM is like great video maker. Um, everything in here was bought by me. Nothing, nothing in here was sponsored. None of this equipment was sponsored. So let's talk about this mic that you always see in the videos here. Uh, this is a Sennheiser ME66. It's a shotgun microphone. Looks kind of funky. It's on this thing called a pistol grip. That's what this mount is because it's pretty self-explanatory. It's on these little red things, so to kind of dampen the sound for vibrations and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's what you always see sticking in from the top or bottom. And then it's on this little mount that I got for like, I don't know, it was like 20 bucks. It's, it's, not, meant for, it's not meant for mics, but you can get a little screw that you can get an adapter for right here. And um, you can just 
put it on like a little boom stand because the actual boom stands cost a whole lot of money. Next up, we got this chair. I get a lot of questions about this chair. Is it a good chair? What do you think about this chair? This little thing here at the bottom is actually a massager, but I've never used it because you have to like plug it in. You can't even charge it. You just have to plug it in. Um, so this is a Vaughn racer. This is a discount DX racer chair pretty pretty much. Um, ain't nobody got money for a DX racer. Uh, it's pretty good. It There are some flaws with it. There are a couple... Uh... All right, so this is, this is the thing with the chair. If you do this, it's a little wiggly, but that's because I stripped the screws. I stripped the, uh, yeah. But overall, I think it's actually a pretty good chair. Pretty comfortable. It was like 200 bucks, something like that. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to the battle station here. All right, so um, you guys always ask about what I do for these backgrounds. This is just wallpaper engine on Steam. It's four bucks, I think and you can just go to the workshop that's integrated with it and you can just pick a theme. I usually pick The Witcher. So this monitor right here is nothing special. It's an AOC brand monitor. I literally, this is the display model that I got from a Office Max that was closing down. It was $88. This one in the middle was what I spent my money on when it first came out and I first got my mechanical engineering job. This is the Asus 1440p monitor, 144 hertz. Pretty good monitor. It's actually starting to die the uh, bottom pixels are starting to bleed and uh, yeah, it's not good. This one over here is a Walmart display model. It's a Samsung 60 Hertz. The color on this monitor is terrible. The color on these two is good. Okay, so this microphone here that I use is a Samsung G-Track Pro. I just got this from Best Buy. I need to get a pop filter for it, I'm aware. But I was thinking about getting the Shure SMB7 as I wanted to start doing more narration type videos and I wanted my voice to be very crisp and very clear. But overall, I think this mic was actually pretty good for the money. I actually really like it. This is a pretty good microphone overall. This actual stand that it's on here, this is, an, is a newer stand. I just got it off Amazon. It was it's definitely not meant for this. I've kind of jerry-rigged it to, to work. I've, I've used like half of a Blue Yeti mount and half of this mount to get it to work. But this, this actual arm here was like 10 bucks off of Amazon. It wasn't too much. All right, so these headphones right here, are Corsair Voids. And I got them on sale at Best Buy for like $70. They're RGB. The quality is actually pretty decent. Um, but what you hear in the stream sometimes is shutdown initiated or shutdown canceled. So there's like this little lady that if you don't actually play sound in the headphones, it'll automatically turn off, which plays a message. It's sometimes you guys hear that. Okay, so the stand that I'm using is just obnoxious and I'm aware of that. Nobody nobody needs an RGB headphone stand. Um, this was this was an impulse buy, I, I regret it. This right here that you guys see on my desk, this is my drawing pad. This is an Intuos Pro, pretty decent. I like it a lot. It's actually really complicated to learn, but just to use it for the basic stuff that I use with uh, you know, the Windows 10 drawing thing. It, it does just fine, I think. Let's talk about this keyboard. Okay, it needs, it needs to be cleaned, I'm aware. But this keyboard right here is a Corsair K70. I bought it so long ago that it has a old logo on it. Um, Corsair tried to rebrand. This is the Corsair logo that you guys know. It's kind of like an Adidas looking thing. And Corsair tried to rebrand themselves a while back and they tried to do that looking kind of like a John Deere type looking logo. Anyways, it's super old. I really like it. Um, I would prefer if I had a keyboard with blue keys, but these are cherry brown keys. I don't have any coworkers to worry about if I get blue keys, you know, I don't wanna. Obviously I have a RGB mouse pad, another obnoxious purchase, but it adds to the overall vibe of the system. Don't look at the cables, okay? Okay, thanks. This is a Galaxy watch if you're wondering. It's not soft, it's a hard mouse pad. I should've got a soft one. Didn't know they existed at the time, but now I have this thing, so I gotta use it. But the cool thing about it is that it has an extra little USB slot. So if I ever need to plug anything real quick and transfer some data or charge something, there it is right there, it's pretty sweet. This mouse right here is a Corsair Scimitar. It's got 12 buttons. I know you're probably thinking, do you play WoW, Josh? And uh, you know, that classic WoW is looking better, better and better every single day, but hey. I mostly use this for editing videos and, and audio for things. So let's move on. I have these RGB lights in the back. You guys see this, um, you can change the colors of them. Oh, I have a webcam up here at the top. So this is just a Logitech, I think it's a C920. It just shoots 1080, it doesn't shoot 4K or anything. Pretty good webcam. Um, this is what I used when I had my remote jobs. This is what I did for daily stand-up. So this is sound foam up here. Tried to make a cool pattern, but you guys never really see it. This thing up here is not a security camera. This is for the Vive. 
I have an HTC Vive and so that's a tracker. And let's move down to the goods of the PC specs that you guys are always asking about. All right, so here's the PC breakdown here. I have um, 64 gigs of Corsair RAM. I know no one really needs 64 gigs of RAM except for me because I do when I edit videos and I have a million different Adobe programs open, Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere, Google, uh, you know, I'm always doing things. I use the RAM, it's, it's a lot and I use, I use almost all of it all the time. And then below I have two 1080s. I have a Zotac 1080 and a GeForce EVGA 1080. I have an NZXT uh, water cooler, works pretty great. Um, I'm running an AMD 1950X as I have a workstation right, rendering videos all day long. I have 1500 watt PSU in there. It's supposed to be flashing and RGB, but right here we have the infamous sunglasses that you always see on the wall. Uh, I just got the top and bottom ones from work and the middle ones I actually bought from Amazon. This is the peripheral shelf. And this is all of my lenses and my kind of camera gear. Here is the HTC Vive. It's the old one. I was thinking about getting an index so I could do some index development. So I think the new knuckles are super cool. But here is the lens collection. I have a whole lot of lenses, lots of full frame lenses. Here's an adapter. This is the biggest and most heavy lens I have. This is a Sigma 50 to 100, probably the best looking lens, most cinematic looking lens. Every time I do a story driven or want to get an epic shot, that is the lens I use. You can't actually use them with this camera or that camera, so you have to put this little adapter on this camera and then you can plug the lens in. More lenses in the back. I have a 360 cam that uh, I'm gonna mess around with pretty soon, have some cool ideas. This is an Insta 360 One X. All right, so yeah, this is a GoPro 7. This is what I film all my writing footage on. I can do more into these lenses if you guys are interested. This is my drone uh, holder down here. We actually have the drone. This is a Mavic 2 Zoom. I should have got the Mavic 2 Pro, but regrets. Behind it, I have three lights that I need to get little stands for, but occasionally I'll use this when I don't want to use that because that thing is just, it's a pain. Moving down, we have the shotgun mic that you saw at the beginning of the video. This is what I used to film all of my videos and use audio. It's just this tiny little Rode Pro. This is the old Rode Pro. When you turn it on, it comes on, but you have to remember to turn it off. I can't count how many times or how many nine volts I've gone through because I leave this thing on. Anyways, it's, it's a good mic, good quality mic. It's what all the little vloggers use. This right here is the motion motor piece for my electronic slider that I have. I use sometimes, occasionally for epic shots. You'll probably see some B-roll using this piece here. This is the bottom piece with the roller and this is the um, axis that it turns and tilts and does a bunch of cool stuff with. Here's a charger in the back for charging all of my stuff. This thing right here, you're like, what the heck is that thing in the back? This is called a color passport. Um, you use it to color correct. So you hold this up in the beginning of the video and then you try to get your levels in post to match the colors correctly. Most of this stuff is just micro USB, but some of it is USB-C. Like the mic I'm using charges with a USB-C cable. All right, down here, a whole bunch of lens caps here and a whole bunch of, for the lens cap on the other side. And then this is a Ninja Atmos 5. I use this as an external monitor with my GH5S. So it mounts on the top like this. It lets you shoot 4K at 60 FPS with a super high resolution. And it gives you a bigger monitor to look at when you're far away from it. And it gives you a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Down here, we have just a bunch of boxes, lens protectors and stuff. Down here, um, we have all my, well, the GoPro mounts that I use. This is a car mount. This is a, uh, head mounts, and then there's an extra nine volt because this thing always <laughs> runs out of battery. One thing I wanna talk about real quick with my lenses is that they're all adapted to be 82 millimeter. I have two ND filters. So I don't wanna to have to buy a whole bunch of different size ND filters. So instead I just bought a bunch of adapters to make them all 82 millimeters. Um, another thing that I would like to talk about with the lens real quick, I can go into more detail later, but this is my Tokina wide lens. This is a full frame lens, but the point is that this little gold ring thing isn't actually part of the lens. This is a UV protector because if I bump, if I bump the UV protector, great. I'm not bumping the glass of the actual lens. And so the UV protector is $35 and this lens is $900. So it's a lot cheaper to just replace the filter on the front that almost has no effect on the image than it is to replace the entire lens. I'm kind of like low key paranoid that there's gonna be like an earthquake one day and this thing is just gonna like shake and fall. Oh, by the way, this whole cage here is from Ikea. Up here at the top, 
I have a Ronin S and you're probably like, why aren't you using that? That's a good question. That's because the GH5 has stabilization. You're wondering what these are? These are nano leaves. These things are not camera approved. They have a horrendous flicker. You could apparently connect it Bluetooth and stuff and control it. But uh, I thought it'd be cool ambient light in the background. Again, I was wrong. because I don't know what, I didn't know what I was doing with camera stuff. This right here is a Samsung 42 inch, 46 inch, something like that. I don't know. Walmart display model on sale, like 200 bucks. I got it years ago when I first got here. The only thing I do is play basically Halo on it and occasionally watch Twitch in the background. Okay, so down here we have my battery station. These are for my lights. These these big ugly batteries, they take forever to charge. They take like all night to charge. This again, another USB charging station here. These are batteries for the Black Magic. This right here, 360 camera batteries. These right here, GoPro batteries. These are GH5 batteries. And then these are all fully charged. This right here is a candle warmer. This will change your life. Go get a candle warmer and then go get one that is orange cream puff. It smells like Fruit Loops. So go ahead, get yourself some Fluke Loops. Maybe I should buy those and rebrand them to Fluke Loops. Down below, we have the OG Xbox One. Super old. This is how old that Xbox is. This is the OG controller. So you can't even plug in a headset unless you buy that old crappy one. That's this room. I know you're like, oh my God, that took forever. All right, well, let me show you the other room. Um, here's a laptop that I have. It has a 1080, 24 gigs of RAM. I, I upgraded the RAM myself. I think the bezels on it are a little bit thick. I think the new laptop, I should have just waited like a month, but. I think the bezels on this thing are just, they're super thick. You know, it edits when I'm on the go. Another Corsair mouse. This is a standing table. This is a reflector. If I need to add light to defined of a shadow, I'll bounce it off of this. iFootage shark mini slider. Here is a tiny little um, selfie stick that I use for the 360 camera. This right here is my iFootage glider. It's called a Wildcat 3 and it, and it just balances. So you can move around wherever. So no batteries, just use the the little pegs on the bottom as weights to keep it even. Over here is a cage for my GH5S. And then inside the closet, I have some extra camera gear here. It's a boom arm, basically, uh, also by iFootage. And then I have a ring light, which I should probably use more, but it only plugs in, it doesn't take batteries, so I gotta figure that out because I don't have any more room to plug in stuff in my room. And then over here, I have lights just like this light. I got about three of them, but I don't got enough batteries or enough space to put these things. And then up here, just have a spare Wii U that I never play, because I'm having to play with. And a hammock and the wigs for my skits. And here's the clothes for the skits. Low pro backpack. Down here, have a spare computer. It's got an i7 2600K in it. Um, I haven't touched that in a while. Probably should. I should probably do something with it. Have a streaming computer or something. Something a little bit different. You guys can see everything I have. Um, I'd like to go in depth and kind of review these things. And I just wanted to show you um, that this is the main, this is the main squeeze room right here. I have all the cool stuff in here and then the rest of my house is kind of empty, like, like the other room. So it does get really hot in here. So I have that AC in the window. The, that AMD 1950X is like the best because in the winter time, it's just like free heating just for working. I think for the most part, most of my gear is best bang for the buck. I'd like to just go all in one day and maybe just get like a super awesome Canon C200 or something like that or Mark DX2 because the autofocus and the quality and I don't know. Thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in anything that I have, the link for it is down there in the kit.com section if you want to know. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you in the next video, the next live stream. Catch you in the next one.